there's a whole new way of working with Kotlin, one where you can skip the mechanical bits and get straight to working on the interesting parts of your software. I'm talking about Juni, the coding agent that we're building at JetBrains and that's now available for you. If you're writing Android apps, doing Kotlin multi-platform or writing server-side code, Juni takes workload off your plate, but it keeps you in the driver's seat. So let's build some stuff with it, shall we? We'll do some server-side code and some multi-platform code too. First, let's build a prototype for a web service. I'm starting with a Ktor project from the wizard in IntelliJ IDEA. There's nothing in here but some plugins and there's an idea in my head. Let's have Juni make it real. I'll pop into the tool window and write what I have in mind. Implement an API that allows me to track progress for reading books by title and percentage with basic CRUD operations. Store the data in memory, write and run tests for the API, and also provide a simple JS frontend at the root endpoint that uses the API with styles from the Tailwind CDN. And let me send that off. Now we'll need to give Juni some time to work. In the meantime, let's talk about how to get Juni in your own IDE. Open the settings, navigate to plugins, and type Juni in the marketplace tab, then hit install. I've already done that here, obviously. Then follow the onboarding instructions and you'll be good to go. As Juni works, it makes use of the Kotlin tooling inside IntelliJ IDEA. It can automatically run tests inside the IDE and can fix them if they fail. And Juni is also aware of more general errors in your code, the same way you are as a Kotlin developer, and can automatically correct them. That's why Juni plus Kotlin is great. A modern language with a focus on safety means you get reliable results, and Juni helps you get there a whole lot quicker. Okay, Juni has finished, so let's take a look. Without me touching anything, Juni created our prototype, road tests, ran them, and got them to green. And trying out the app, we can see that we can add books, we can make changes just like we wanted to. Thanks to Juni, we got to skip the mechanical work of getting a scaffold for our application up and running, so we can spend our time on what makes our app unique. Maybe that wild idea I've had for a recommender system or that collaborative functionality that I've always wanted to see. Like any other code in our project, we review it to see if it's up to our standard, and we can make changes directly, or tell Juni to implement the changes by itself. That's where the follow-up feature would come in handy. Looking through the code, I'm quite happy with what I came up with, so I can move on to committing these changes. Oh, and by the way, you can customize the way Juni does its work too. Just create a directory called .juni and create a file called guidelinesmd inside it. In this file, you can add whatever guidelines you would like Juni to respect when it's working on your project. I'm opinionated on how to store data, so I can specify that as part of the guidelines. This project should use SQLite with JDBC exclusively for persisting data. Tests should create an ephemeral database. Now I can send Juni off to work on another task because the book progress is currently stored in memory, so make it persistent instead. If I want to be more in the loop, I could uncheck brave mode. That means Juni will ask for explicit permission when it performs operations like deleting files or running terminal commands, but I'm okay keeping things in brave mode for now. Now, when Juni works on the task, it will take my provided guidelines into account. Guidelines are general purpose, so you can include whatever information that is relevant. You can include info about how source code should be organized in your project, specific coding conventions you want to use, libraries that you always or never want to use, and scripts you want Juni to execute in order to validate its work. Whatever you specify, Juni will take it all into account. After a short while, Juni is done with this task too. The changed files are summarized here nicely, and we can click them to open the diff viewer and see the changes. If for some reason we're unhappy with the result, we also have a one-click option to roll it back. But that's not necessary here, because, like I specified, Juni added SQLite-based persistence to my app with an implementation based on JDBC. So it took my guidelines into account. I can also see this in action in the app. I can make a change and then restart the application. Since everything's persisted in the database, the state's still available after a restart. Nice. So Juni can whip up a prototype for our next killer app from scratch, but what about working in existing projects? Well, let's see. Let's pop over into the repository for the official Kotlin Conf app. There's quite a lot going on in this repo. A backend implementation, a separate package for UI components, a gallery module, and of course, the actual Kotlin multi-platform app. In a code base like this, Juni can, first of all, help us navigate and understand what's going on. Let me switch from code mode that we've used so far to ask mode. And let me ask, how does the backend API expose information about speakers? Ask mode just helps you get answers about your code base. Juni explores the project much like we would otherwise do manually. Once it finds the relevant information after a little bit, we get a detailed report that answers our questions and provides some helpful context around it. And we can read through this report and devise some next steps that we want to do. Incidentally, in the version of the app that I have checked out on my machine, the screen that's supposed to show the details for a speaker at KotlinConf isn't implemented yet. As you can see, its implementation is just empty for now. So 
UI work in a multi-platform code base? It's something else I want to fire off to Juni. So back to code mode. Implement the speaker detail screen, and here we go. As Juni tinkers away, I want to mention that this is actually a non-trivial task. The app has a completely custom design system with non-standard components that come from a separate Gradle project. It also uses Coin as a dependency injection framework, and it has an established way of what the app should behave like overall. But Juni can do all of that stuff too. To match these things, it automatically references other code in the project. So the code you get is already pretty consistent out of the box with other code that's already in the project. Juni iterates on its solution until it arrives at something that works. And we can see the screen it came up with. If we want further tweaks, we can always propose some enhancements with some follow-up tasks, but honestly, I like it just the way it is. We can browse the resulting code and see whether it's thorough liking. And if everything looks good, well, ship it. Juni is a really great tool to get you focused on what you feel matters most when working in Kotlin code bases and gets you more quickly to working on interesting problems rather than purely mechanical tasks. And the best part, you stay in charge throughout the whole process. You can start working with Kotlin and Juni right now. For more info, head on over to jetbrains.com slash Juni, install the plugin yourself, and start building some great new things. Have a wonderful Kotlin, and take care.